Hey everyone, just wanted to kind of create a video series or video playlist on getting started with Ruby Motion, uh, which allows you, Ruby Motion allows you to go ahead and develop um, native applications on Android, iOS, tvOS, and uh, other of your favorite platforms here using Ruby, which I love Ruby. Ruby is, is meant for developer happiness, that's what it's created for. So I would recommend if you haven't downloaded Ruby Motion yet, go to rubymotion.com, go to download, and then get the starter pack right here. You can download that, and it'll allow you to go ahead and get started with iOS 9.3 and Android 5.1. Now, if you're looking to get the most out of it, you'll definitely want to jump in and buy the indie or professional one. I'd, I'd recommend indie if you're just a solo developer or small business like that. That'll give you access to developing um, backwards SDKs, so going back to iOS 5.0 um, and Android 2.2. It also allows you to start developing for iOS, watch OS, and TV OS as well. So that's pretty cool. Now, again, if you're a big business and you're looking to get started with um, Ruby Motion and developing on those platforms, I would recommend the uh, the enterprise or the professional one which allows you to, to get, you know, prioritized bug, bug handling and support in uh, incidents. So jump on there, download your starter pack if you're just getting started, and let's start on a RubyMotion example project here. So I'm gonna open up my terminal. I have my, I guess my focus in my RubyMotion projects directory here. And once you have it installed, you can see what version you have. At the time of this recording, the version I have is 4.11, and that again allows me to go ahead and develop on iOS 9.3. Now, you can get more information on what you can do with this motion command here by running motion dash dash help. And I think the most used option here, the most used command here, will be the motion create. That'll allow you to go ahead and create a new project, much like you would with uh, Ruby on Rails. So you'll be um, typing in motion, create, and then the app name. And then another one you want to keep handy is the motion update. So just to make sure that you have the latest version, you can go ahead and run motion update. It'll go ahead and check. So of course you got to be, you have to be root to do that. So motion update, and I will enter in my password here. It's going to connect to the Ruby motion server, and it's going to check to see if uh, your software is, of course, up to date. Right on, so it is up to date, and what we'll do is we'll jump into creating our first application. So what we'll do is type in motion create, and this will show you what you can do with the create command. Um, you'll definitely wanna uh, append your app name to the end of that, and uh, I just wanted to show you that you could also add in a template, so you could add in a template for uh, tvOS, watchOS, OS, Android, or iOS. And I think by default, it just defaults to iOS. I could be wrong. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think I believe that's what it does by default. And so what we'll do is motion create, and we're gonna create an example here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create an example directory within this directory. And it's gonna place in these files right here. These are just like the default template files. And what you want to do is you want to go into your example directory and let's see what's in there. Let me let me clear up this information. All right, now you can see exactly what's in there. We have a gem file, a rake file, app resources, and your spec directory. Now the gem file, if you're familiar with building uh, Ruby projects, is where you would go ahead and you put your Ruby gems. So by default, it's only going to have rake in there. So if we open that up and we'll open that up. I'm gonna use Sublime to open this up. That way I can run the um, simulator and you guys can see it at the same time. So let's open up our keyboard there. All right, we got our sidebar and in our app, oh sorry, in our gem file, we have that gem rake and you can go ahead and you can add in some other gems right below here. Some great gems for developing with Ruby Motion would be things like ProMotion, uh, Ruby Motion Query, and one of the newest hits is Red Potion. So go ahead and do a Google search or web search uh, for those Ruby Motion gems. Now, Ruby Motion gems are are different than regular Ruby gems, and you can't use 
regular Ruby gems for the most part on your Ruby Motion projects uh, because the Ruby Motion gems are designed specifically to be running on the iOS or Android or any of the Ruby Motion um, operating systems that that um, it's designed to to run on. So again, not all the Ruby Motion, not all the Ruby gems will run in a Ruby Motion gem file. So just keep that in mind. You want to look for Ruby Motion gems, not Ruby gems. All right, and then we have the rake file here, and this is where you'll put a lot of your um, application settings. You can put all that in your rake file, mostly within the uh, the app setup right here. So one thing to consider is if you run rake config, and again, you can see your rake tasks if you're familiar with rake using rake dash capital T. You can see what you can do, what you can run with rake. Take a look at that, study it, um, and try a few out now just to kind of run through it real quick we have the build this will build everything you know actually have a build directory in there um, you'll see that after I build this for the first time rake can clean all will you know take all those built options away rake config is what we're gonna be running in just a second this will show you the crash log uh, the device specs things like that so just go ahead and take a look at that real quick try some out um, and to get familiar with it um, we'll, we'll be running some of these throughout um, this series so you'll get familiar with the the ones you probably will use the most and again we're gonna be running rake config here and this is gonna show you some of the settings that you can go ahead and edit so right here take a look at the frameworks we're using some default frameworks here things like UI kit foundation core graphics core foundation things like that if you want to get familiar with some of these frameworks I'd recommend looking up the frameworks within the documentation so right here we have a guide on uh, the UI kit other things like Coco uh, 2d Coco 2d I am spelling things wrong anyways you can look through the documentation for these frameworks, get familiar with them. A lot of what we'll do in the beginning is is working with the UI kit, which is just kind of designing what your app looks like. Um, and then right here you'll see name, which is the same as right here. So if we change this to my app and we rerun rate config, you'll see that it the name has changed to my app. So if you put something in here and you want to go ahead and prepend that with app dot and let's say that maybe we want to change the deployment target so you, you'd have to have an India professional version in order to change the deployment target but you can deploy to maybe 9.0 the iOS SDK 9.0 with the starter you need to deploy to 9.3 with this version of the starter anyways uh, so you have to deploy to the latest version um, but you can this I'm just kinda of going through this just to explain that you can go ahead and you can change a lot of things. Now one of the first things that I noticed when working with this rake file is that when you're including a framework and you want to make sure that you have these these frameworks as well, you need to make sure that you append the framework as a um, so appending to this framework's array. So if you're going to include another framework, include it like this with the framework name in there that way um, you're including your pending to the already created array if you just set it like this it'll go ahead and it'll remove those defaults and it'll just go ahead and give you that one framework um, so again you want to use that plus equals to append and you want to put this in array format so if you're going to include multiple frameworks you just go ahead and do it like so all right so with that out of the way Let's go ahead and I'll just save this like as is and we'll just go ahead and run rake for the first time just to see what's going on with the default application. After this we're going to jump into the app delegate and I'm going to show you what's going on here. So as you can see within our simulator, our simulator started up on this right hand side. On the left hand side we have rake and what rake is doing is it's building the application right and it's created a build directory so if you go into sublime here you can see that it's created a build directory and that build directory has this information within it and you don't have to really worry about that information 
when you're getting everything going you just worry about the information that's within your app and your spec file for the most part resources that's where you're gonna put some of the images some of the the files that you're gonna be calling upon within your app so that's just kind of the resources or image file things you want to include just throw that into your resources file uh, organize it how you would want it to be organized and let's see so if we go back to the simulator we will see that we have a title bar here a navigation bar with the name or title of our view and then we have a background color of white so how do I know this well if I pull this to the left hand side and I open up the app delegate so looking at the app delegate file you might be wondering what the heck's going on here especially if you're just starting with um, iOS development you're not familiar with it at all so what this is for is is your iOS application needs an app delegate that's going to tell it how to get started how to launch and so this app delegate file is going to have a method in there known as application it's going to pass two parameters in there it's going to pass the application and it's going to pass in a did finish launching with option so this comes with by default when you create a new motion application now what the heck is this right if we open up dash which I, I use dash as my developer documentation it allows me to just quickly go ahead and look up some of the information that's that's within an SDK so right here I'm looking up the did finish launching with options it's telling what this is telling the application or the launch process is that the app is ready to run and once it's ready to run go ahead and run the information that's in there so go ahead and run that code that's in there and you do have some other options here as you can see we have will finish launching with options and this if you have in within your app delegate will actually run before the launch process is finished so if you notice we have the will finish and the did finish typically within the iOS SDK will actions will run before and did actions will run after so just keep that in mind because you'll see it a couple of times throughout the iOS SDK when you're working with it so we'll just run with what we have here right now once we get a little more advanced we'll look at the other options here so just kind of accept that this is what you would <laughs> need to get your your Ruby motion application started and within this you'll see that we have a root view controller and we're assigning it a UI view controller and then you see allocate init now if you're a Ruby motion or if you're a Ruby developer, you're, you're like, uh, what? What is this alloc, alloc init? And basically, what that is is, let's allocate some memory to this UI view controller. It's kind of like using the dot new within Ruby, right? Uh, but instead, we're using allocate dot init. Now, as you can see, we can init with frame. Uh, we can pass in some other options here and actually to see what options we can pass in there we go ahead and look up the UI view controller and then read through that documentation to see what you can go ahead and uh, start with it so right here on the side you can init with nib name and we'll jump into that later you need a nib file and I believe that comes from Xcode not sure at this time since I'm just getting started with Ruby motion as well but that's what I believe at the moment if someone else knows do correct me um, all right, so we have the root view controller and we're starting a new instance of that. Okay, we got the root view controller and we're naming it with a title of example. So we'll see that we can title it here. So title is a property and you can pass that in when you're creating it. So we have other properties that you can take a look at if I remove this and I scroll down here, you got title preferred content size view if loaded things like that properties that you can pass through in there but just for example sake we're gonna stick with title and the default information that's given there so this title example is what is showing up on this navigation bar and how do we get it to show up on that navigation bar well what you would do is you would need a navigation controller and this navigation controller if we look that up within the doc as well it's gonna create that navigation bar so you'll see that if you look at this diagram this interface right here it will allow you to title your UI view controllers so that's pretty cool huh 
And of course, in order to do that, we need to allocate some memory to that and we need to init with a root view controller. And we are initting with a root view controller. The root view controller is something that the window needs. So we need to set the root view controller and we're setting that root view controller to root view controller that we created right here. So just to kind of reiterate, we create the root view controller using UI view controller. Then in order to have that navigation bar, we need to create another controller which contains it. And so that navigation controller is going to contain your root view controller. It's going to look for that title and it's going to display that title right at the top here. Okay, so that's simply what it does. And then you see right below we have a UI view background color and we're setting it to UI color white color. So we'll go into UI color in a bit, but for now, just kind of accept that we're um, using UI color. You can change this to white color, blue color, black color, red color, yellow color, anything like that, but we're going to stick with the white color for now. And so that navigation controller is taking that view and it's passing it through and including that navigation bar with the title. So you can change this title at any time. So if you want to change it to my app, you can go ahead and do so. You'll have to rebuild the application in order for that to go ahead and take place. But let's let's do that and I'll show it after I rebuild. Now before I rebuild, let's go into this window. So your application, your app delegate file needs a window and it's kind of like a reserved variable here. It needs a window to look at or, or and it needs a window for the views to show in. So this navigation controller contains the root view controller, right? But what contains the navigation controller? Well, the window contains that navigation controller. So that's why you would create a window. You would allocate some memory to it. You're going to start it up with a frame. So if we take a look at that in the documentation, again, everything I'm referencing here, you'll want to take a look at within the iOS application or iOS development um, documentation to get familiar with what's going on here. So we have that UI view or the UI window and we're setting, we're initiating it with a frame. So we'll initiate with a frame and what that's going to do is it's creating that window and it's setting the frame to the screen's bounds. So it's, it's making sure that it stays within the bounds of this UI screen. And so what happens next is you need to set a root view controller and the root view controller is going to, it's going to be the main container for that window. And that's why we have to set the navigation controller to that root view controller. Lastly, we have to tell the application that we want it to be like the index and we want it to be visible. If we don't set this, we won't have that there available. We won't be able to see that. And then, Last but not least, we return true and that tells the application delegate to, that it's truthy and we want it to continue with the launch process. So just to show that we can change the title here, let's rebuild this. I'm going to exit the REPL and I am going to rebuild that real quick. So we'll rake it and it's going to rebuild and it's going to start at that simulator again and it's going to show my app as the title. Great. All right. So. Now that we've kind of gone through the app delegate and the basics here, um, let's just run through this one more time. The application folder is where most of your code is going to be. So you're going to put the app delegate, you're going to put your view controllers, your controllers in there, everything. Then you have their spec folder, which all your testing is going to be in there. Your resources folder where you put things like pictures in there and the build. You don't really go into the build folder. That's mainly meant for rake and it's going to go ahead and build that application for you. The gem files where you put your Ruby motion gems and your rake files where you go ahead and change some of those app setups or the app settings. So I hope this helps. I hope this kind of gets you started with the beginning and kind of understanding what's going on here with Ruby motion. Um, definitely take a look at some of the iOS SDK documentation and get familiar with what's going on here. Um, I guess in the next episode, what we'll do is we'll create a view controller and we'll get started with working with some things like buttons and um, other UI elements. So hope this helps.